Today, we have a special story for you. It's a Pokemon creepypasta about a specific person who have stumbled on the wrong Pokemon cartridge. This cartridge is called Trapped Yellow. Brought to you by Lekamon. Hello, Raging Angels. My name is Lekka, and today I'm going to be doing a Pokemon Creepypasta per the wonderful Spoopy Season Pokemon Project that Raging Trainer is doing on his channel. So, Raging, thank you so much for having me on as one of the readers. I very much appreciate you. If you guys want even more amazing content like this in the future, make sure that you sub to him literally right now. He just passed over a thousand subscribers, which is amazing. So let's see how fast we can get this man to 1,500 wonderful subs. So we are going to be doing the titled Trapped Yellow version. So I'm going to be uh, moving myself over to the side so that we can have the preview of the story here on the screen so you can read along with me as I get into character for the spoopy reactions. I never thought I'd find myself in a situation like this. It all started when I stumbled upon an old Pokemon cartridge at a flea market. The label was faded and the title read Pokemon Yellow version. I was a Poketuber, always on the lookout for rare finds to showcase to my audience. But little did I know that this cartridge would lead me down a dark path. As soon as I got home, I popped the cartridge into my Game Boy, just like any other one who got something from a flea market would. The screen flickered to life and I was greeted by the familiar, pixelated world of Kanto. But something felt off. The music was a bit distorted, there was a haunting melody that sent chills down my spine as I played through it, and I initially just shrugged it off, thinking it was just a glitch, the game was old, it was from a flea market. And I continued my journey, but as I ventured and eventually reached Lavender Town, the atmosphere shifted. The town was eerily quiet, and the usual cheerful music was replaced by a low, mournful tune. I noticed that the Pokemon Center was empty, and the townsfolk were nowhere to be found. Instead, I encountered ghostly figures that whispered my name, and their voices echoing in my mind as I went through. I tried to leave, but the game wouldn't let me escape from Lavender Town's perimeter. The screen flickered again, and I felt a strange pull, as if the game was trying to suck me into it. Suddenly, I was no longer in my room. I found myself standing in the middle of Lavender Town, the pixelated world now twisted into reality. The air was thick with an unsettling energy, and I could hear the whispers growing louder. You shouldn't have come here, they warned. Panic had set in as I realized that I really was now trapped in the game. I ran towards the Pokemon Center, hoping to find a way out, but as I entered, I was met with a horrifying sight. The walls were covered in dark stains, and the floor was littered with broken controllers and discarded cartridges. In the corner, I saw a shadowy figure. It was a Pokemon? I think I had just never seen it before. Its eyes glowed with malice, and it seemed to be watching me, stalking me. Rumors had circulated online about a cursed version of Pokemon Yellow, one that, you know, would <laughs> wrap players in a never-ending nightmare, but I always just shrugged it off because I, as a Poketuber, have come across many things in the past that said there were creepypasta and cursed versions of this, but to actually encounter one was a completely different story. I had always just dismissed them as the urban legends they were, but now I was the one living the horror. I tried to escape, but every time I reached the edge of town, I was pulled back as if the game itself was keeping me there. Days turned into weeks, and as I wandered through the twisted streets of Lavender Town, the ghostly whispers were growing more insistent. I could feel the presence of that shadowy Pokemon lurking just out of my sight, always watching and always waiting. I tried to battle it, thinking that maybe defeating it would set me free, but my Pokemon were powerless against its dark energy. Each encounter left me more drained, both physically and mentally. Desperation clawed at me as I searched for answers. I stumbled upon an old, decrepit building that resembled the Pokemon Tower, and inside I found a dusty old computer with a screen flickering full of static. I approached it cautiously, hoping that it may provide a way out, and as I pressed a few keys, a message appeared that said to escape, you must confront your fears. I didn't really understand what it meant, but I felt a surge of determination. I had to face whatever was haunting me, so I ventured deeper into the tower with the air growing colder every step. The whispers turned into screams echoing my own fears back at me, and I saw visions of my past failures as a Poketuber, videos that had flopped, comments that cut deep, and the constant pressure to be perfect online. Then, 
when I finally reached the top floor where the shadowy Pokemon awaited me, I saw its grotesque amalgamation of familiar Pokemon all twisted and corrupted, fused together into this thing before me. Its eyes bore into my soul, and I realized that it was a manifestation of my own insecurities and doubts. I was not just battling a creature, I was battling myself. With a trembling hand, I sent out my strongest Pokemon, but it was no use. The creature laughed, a chilling sound that echoed through the tower. <laughs> you cannot defeat me, it taunted. You are trapped in your own mind, just like this game. In that moment, I understood. I had to confront my fears head on. I couldn't use my Pokemon to battle. I had to myself. I closed my eyes and focused on the things that had haunted me. My fear of failure, the anxiety of not being good enough, the pressure to entertain. I opened my eyes, I faced the creature, and no longer was I a player in this game, but a person before it. You don't control me, I shouted, my voice steady and sure. I am more than my fears. The creature, upon hearing these words flow from my lips, recoiled, its form flickering as if it were losing power. I summoned all of my strength and unleashed a powerful attack, not just in the game, but in my heart. And the creature let out a final, anguished scream before dissolving into a cloud of pixels, scattering like ashes into the wind. The tower trembled, and I felt a rush of energy surge through me. For the first time since I had entered this nightmare, I felt a glimmer of hope. But just as quickly as that hope came, the hope was overshadowed by a new realization. The tower began to collapse around me, and the walls were crumbling as the ground shook. I sprinted towards the exit, dodging falling debris and the remnants of the haunting whispers that still echoed in my mind, and I could see the light of Lavender Town outside beckoning me to escape. And as I burst through the doors, I was met with the blinding flash of light. I shielded my eyes, and when I opened them again, I was back in my original room, with my Game Boy still in my hands. The screen displayed the familiar Game Over message, but something felt different. The air was thick with some sort of uncanny, unsettling energy, and I could still hear the faint whispers of Lavender Town lingering in my background. I quickly turned off the Game Boy, my heart racing. Had I truly escaped, or was this room I was in just another layer of the nightmare? I glanced at the cartridge, now glowing faintly, as if it were alive, and a chill ran down my spine as I remembered the rumors I had seen online about players who had never returned from the cursed version of Pokemon Yellow. Days had passed, and I tried to return to my normal life, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Every time I sat down to record a video, I felt a presence lurking just beyond the camera, a shadow in the corner of my eye, and I began to receive strange comments on my videos, cryptic messages that seemed to reference Lavender Town and the cursed cartridge. One night, as I was editing, I heard a soft whisper, barely audible, but unmistakable nonetheless. You can't escape. My heart raced as I turned to look behind me, but there was nothing there. I glanced at the Game Boy, which sat ominously on my desk, and the screen was flickering as if it were trying to communicate with me. I knew I had to make a choice. I could either destroy the cartridge and sever this connection, or I could dive back into the game and confront whatever darkness still lingered there. Maybe, perhaps, find a way to truly escape from this nightmare once and for all. But deep down, I felt the pull of the game, and I felt the allure of the adventure that awaited me within its pixelated world. I hesitated, torn between the safety of my current reality and the haunting curiosity that beckoned me back. But the whispers grew louder more insistent, drowning out my doubts. You belong with us, they said in a chant, a siren's call that I simply couldn't resist. So, with a heavy heart, I picked up the Game Boy and inserted the cartridge. The screen flickered to life and I was once again transported to Lavender Town with the eerie music wrapping around me like a shroud. The familiar streets felt more oppressive this time, the shadows deeper in the air, thicker, this time with dread. As I navigated through the town, I realized that the shadowy Pokemon was no longer just a figment of my imagination. It was real, and it was waiting for me. I felt his presence lurking, just out of sight, a constant reminder of my fears and my failures. I tried to battle it again, but this time my Pokemon were weak and their energy sapped by the darkness that surrounded us every time I went to approach him. I fought valiantly, but this creature was just relentless. It absorbed my attacks, growing stronger with each of my failed attempts. The whispers morphed into mocking laughter, echoing my despair. You cannot escape your fate, they taunted. You are ours now. 
in a final act of desperation, I summoned all of my remaining strength and unleashed a powerful move. But it was futile. The shadowy Pokemon lunged at me, engulfing me in its dark energy, and I felt myself being pulled into its depth, my consciousness fading as I was consumed by the very fears that I had tried to confront. When I finally opened my eyes, I found myself trapped within the game, a mere ghost wandering the desolate streets of Lavender Town. I could see my own character, now just a hollow shell, continuing to play, but oblivious to the darkness that had taken its toll. The whisper surrounded me, a constant reminder of my failure to escape. As I drifted through the pixelated landscape, I realized that I was now a part of the very nightmare that I had tried to conquer. The game had claimed me, and I, too, was now destined to haunt its corridors forever, a warning to others who dared to confront their fears. The screen flickered ominously, and I could hear the faint echoes of my own voice, lost in the shadows, whispering one final time, you can't escape. Make sure you guys sub to Raging's channel because he's a beautiful fucking bean. Leka, thank you so, so much for joining in on this project. This was amazing. If you guys enjoyed today's content, go ahead and check out Leka's channel. It's inside the description below. I honestly enjoy making these, so if you guys want to see more, please leave a like and leave a comment if you are interested in joining in on one of these and join the Discord. Outside of that, thank you so much for watching and goodbye. <laughs>